crust of the earth, six miles of it, on, on this water, caused the water to eject from the earth at supersonic speed. Much of this water escaped the escape velocity of the earth and headed toward the moon. Noah and the animals went safely onto the ark. God shut the door. I'm going to make a scientific experiment today with the Colorado River for billions of years. And now as promised, I told you that I would tell you inform you how much water is actually in the earth. This creationist's promises are completely and utterly meaningless. The scientific experiment is supposed to show, uh, I don't know, something. Well, today you'll get a lesson in geology. Not from this creationist, I won't. What is the age of the Earth? 4.5 billion years. I think a 300 below zero Fahrenheit ice meteor came flying through the solar system and began to break apart. When did the creation actually occur? 4.5 billion years ago. To be dumped largely around the poles because of the Earth's magnetic field. So the Earth had these massive cold spots. We've already shown that the massive cold spots would be about 10,000 degrees Celsius. And of course, we're going to go to the Bible. Let's not use the lead lead isochron dating or the various independently verified radiometric datings. Let's instead use the scientific book that states pi is equal to 3 and that the sun revolves around the earth. Did the river flow uphill for millions of years to carve out the Grand Canyon? Or is it possible that the Grand Canyon is the result of Noah's flood? Boy, are there really only two choices? Either water miraculously flows uphill, or an invisible being miraculously made a man out of clay and a woman out of a rib, and then launched a worldwide flood in order to drown most of their descendants. They found that the plates of the earth on which the continents rest are sitting on water, not magma. That's ridiculous. It's completely asinine. Water has a lower density per unit volume than rock. Obviously, rocks do not float on water. This is about a 4 megaton thermonuclear device. A 200 by 200 by 200 kilometer ice ball colliding with the Earth at cometary speed would release the equivalent energy of 30 such nuclear devices for each of the 6 billion people who currently live on this planet. If Noah really was on that ark, water would have been the least of his problems. According to this creationist, volcanoes don't erupt with magma, they don't eject lava flows. No, apparently they eject water. I'm more inclined to think water flows uphill, but faced with these two supernatural inanities, neither of them really appeals. I wonder if there's a third possibility, you know, something that has a natural explanation that's fairly easy to understand. When the Earth split open, the water ejected at supersonic velocity, enough velocity that it would escape the Earth, as a matter of fact, and now that's why we have comets, and that's why there is uh, ice meteors uh, that have uh, pelted the moon. Yeah, that's right, Nephi, and I previously showed you how this was impossible without violating conservation of energy. But why would a creation scientist let something as fleeting and facile as one of the foundational concepts of physics? Why would a creation scientist let that get in the way of his pointless speculations based on some Bronze Age ramblings from some desert nomad goat herders? I know. Let's see what the geologists say. Well, they don't have any trouble with this one at all. Uplift and erosion. Haven't we been through this? Not once did the river ever have to flow uphill. Fragments of this meteor hit the planets, and landing on mostly the North and South Pole, freezing the mammoths standing up. But the inside of the column of water wouldn't have been affected this way, and it would have passed through itself like a pipe at supersonic speeds like a super liquid. Any luck with that experiment yet? You can see this is taking a while. Pre-flood things were different. I think there was a canopy of water that increased air pressure which would make animals grow much larger. This canopy of water would filter out quite a bit of radiation. 
Yep, that amount of ice would filter out a lot of radiation. In fact, it would filter out all of it. Now let me tell you, I'm a doctor. All right. Now here's here's what I believe happened with the with the with the um with the, with the dragons with the dinosaurs. Because all rivers create deltas, and you know, the Grand Canyon has no delta. The, where the water goes into the uh, Gulf of California, there is no delta. So, you guys, want to look that up? Yeah, guys, let's look that up. Google images Colorado River Delta. So here's a picture of the Colorado River Delta. Here's another picture of the Colorado River Delta. And shot straight through the atmosphere of the Earth into outer space, where it froze into rocks made of ice, dirty rocks made of ice. Because there was so much oxygen, you only had to breathe in that once a minute, and it would, it would perfuse his whole body with oxygen. But after the flood, serious trouble. That poor old dinosaurs, they had trouble breathing. They lumbered around and they, were, they looked blue, I should think, because they were cyanose. They couldn't breathe. The one thing that us surface dwellers figure out pretty quick is that great slabs of water do not float in the air. These are not observed as they are simply not gravitationally viable. Now let's let the creationist destroy his own argument. By the way, they are breathing very fast, and what happens if you breathe, breathe in out very fast through nostrils which are only as thick as this pencil? Guess what? Your nose catches on fire. Guess what? Your nose catches on fire. Carrying elements of the earth inside the earth with it, like iridium. And that is why there is such thing as a K2 boundary today, which evolutionists claim was caused by a meteoric impact. Stop. Uh, did I get you right that not only did the Earth ejaculate all of this water and cause the craters on the moon, but it also deposited iridium in what did you call it, a, a K2 boundary? Where are the, the erosional remnants? Where's the delta? 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 So not only would this ice shield block out all light from the surface of the Earth, it wouldn't affect the atmospheric pressure at all, simply because it's not in contact with the atmosphere. Have you ever heard of dragons breathing fire? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what was happening. That's, what, that's my theory, anyway. In geology, there is no such thing as a K2 boundary. K2 is a mountain on the border between China and Pakistan. Um, the water's filling it up, but it doesn't really look like it's... It cut in into the dirt. Oh, for fuck's sake, come back to me when you're done. However, if we assume that it were physically viable for such a structure to exist, what would happen if it were to fall to Earth? Yeah, isometric radiometric dating. Oh, you bloody moron. That's isochron dating, not isometric. Objects falling about a thousand kilometers will heat up between one and five thousand degrees upon hitting the ground. Clearly, the mere collapse of the canopy would sterilize every living thing on the planet. When the Earth split open, the water ejected at supersonic velocity, enough velocity that it would escape the Earth, as a matter of fact, and now that's why we have comets. Let's be fair and entertain this creationist concept for a moment that Noah's flood had the same elemental composition as the comets. Well, you see, one of the more offensive compounds found in, say, for instance, Halley's Comet is cyanide. But actually, megatons of cyanide-laced water would have been the least of Noah's concerns. You see, comets have some 10% carbon monoxide. So there you have it. The dinosaurs became extinct due to SNC, spontaneous nostril combustion. If Noah's flood had had cometary composition, no one would have lived long enough to drown. And if God had wanted Noah to survive, he would have instructed him to build a breathing apparatus and a terraforming plant rather than a boat. As you can see from the tootle, when rushing water gouges out an erosion channel, it pretty much heads in a straight line. But even the massive body of water that supposedly punched out the Grand Canyon was much, much bigger. It seems to have decided on a very strange course. Here it comes, roaring ahead and tearing through the sediment. Then it decides to take a sharp left turn. Then it goes roaring ahead again. Oh, but then it slows down to make two sharp turns to the right and come back on itself. Secondly, an ice canopy of the thickness suggested by Hovind would not merely coat the Earth, it would drown it. Currently, the tallest mountains on Earth are about 10 kilometers. If Hovind's ice shield did melt and fall to Earth, we would never see the land again. But now it's away. No, it's decided to take a sharp left turn. 
and another left turn. Where's it going? Oh, it's away, racing through the sediment. It's slow to a crawl now, and it's done more than a 360 degree turn here. No, another sharp left and another, and you have to wonder what was going through the mind of this very discerning body of water as it went on a scenic tour of the Colorado Plateau. By the way, comets are typically high in iridium. No, Neff, comets are rich in water. It's only the iron-rich meteors that have monstrous levels of iridium. What if there were 800 kilometers of ice sitting on the atmosphere? Well, first it would compress the atmosphere such that it would be about one meter thick. It's about three feet. An element that is found in the K2 boundary. No, Neff, it's the KT boundary. K2 is a mountain. Only an idiot would say that because water can carve erosion channels through soft mud in a matter of hours, it can do the same through hard layers of granite, schist, and quartzite. As you guys can see, the hole that I dug right here with this oil water didn't increase in volume whatsoever. And over here, it dug through the entire ground. Which was created by the flood because comets are from the same water as the flood. Actually, Neff, if that were true, it would have gassed all life on Earth, whether they were in a boat or no, long before anything even thought about drowning. If we ignore the fact that at this pressure the atmosphere would liquefy, Noah and every other living creature on Earth would have vast amounts of gas dissolved in their blood. Basically, this means that on the collapse of the canopy, this is what would happen to Noah and every other living thing on the planet. And yeah, he really does go on to sign off with, keep thinking, you might just get there eventually. So, you guys can see that my theory that the Grand Canyon was created by uh, Noah's Flood, by the lake that um, existed after Noah's Flood, is correct. And that is what created the Grand Canyon. It was not evolution, it was creation. Oh my god, this... Stupid, and that last statement is so bad it burns! The Grand Canyon being created by evolution? Guess what? Your nose catches on fire. Where are Guess the, what? Your nose the catches on fire. Where's the Guess delta? What? Your nose Where's the delta? 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 Guess what? Your nose catches on fire.